Hello, everyone, and welcome. And uh, thanks for coming here today, Missing the Eagles, because I wanted to see him too. Anyway, I'm Salima Hakeem. I'm a talk show host of Salima Speaks. But today, sadly to say, it's not all about me. It's about Landmark Productions. Um, Landmark Productions was started in 1998 by Carla P. Morales. Um, it was formed by a bunch of writers, directors, and actors that really couldn't get into the mainstream for whatever reason, ethnic background probably. So they started their own production company, Landmark Productions, and they have done amazing things and are still doing amazing things. And today we're here for a screening of the book of Nimrod. I fell in love with the series, I fell in love with the cast, some of the greatest up and coming artists uh, that you've ever seen. Anyway, we're gonna show you a little clip about Landmark Productions, so stay tuned, thanks. Thank you, and thank you, Carla. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And now we're going to have a selection, um, a singer, Jeanette DeVoye Grayson. Um, I know I said that wrong, sorry. But she's a, an amazing singer, and she's going to give us a treat right now. Thank you. Landmark Productions has been striving since 1998. We are finally getting headway. At last. Fantastic. I would have sang for y'all, but I can't sing like that. Y'all might leave if I try to sing. <laughs> and don't forget, at the end, we're going to have a question and answer um, thing so you can ask the uh, actors and the cast members things about themselves, about the show, and um, things like that. So now um, we're going to show episodes. We're going to show like little snippets from each uh, of the episodes for the Book of Nimrod. Um, and don't forget to get your questions that you want to ask the actors in your head, and um, we'll take it from there. Okay? Enjoy. Thank you. Fantastic, fantastic. And I mean, you guys don't know what, go what goes into that if you're not in the business, but a lot goes into making it look good. Carla, thank you. And I'm so glad to be a part of this. Um, some people have asked me, why is it so dark? Well, you know what? This life imitates art, and this is real life, okay? Um, and we're going to have the actors come up and introduce themselves, and um, you can ask some questions. I mean, how's everyone doing? My name is David Bravo. I play Angel. Um, my name is Lindo Jones, and I played um, yeah, the dead guy, Andrew. <laughs> my name is Jeremy Zayas, and I play Silk. Hi, my name is Noel Reyna, and I play Nimrod. My name is Rihanna Lopez, and I play Baby. <laughs> my name is Dion Stone, and I played the mother. I'm Carla Morales, a uh, writer and director. Um, I go by Hurricane Morales. I actually um, filmed it and edited it. Oh, we have one right over here. Emmanuel, right over here. <laughs> Gotta move a little faster. <laughs> 
I want to ask Baby, did it scare you to play that part? Oh, Baby? Um, no, not really, because everyone was really friendly, and it was kind of fun to, like, you know, um, do new things. So, yeah. And I have a question for all of you guys. How did you guys uh, get started into acting? Start with me. I got started acting with, um, I really wasn't an actor at all. I do music, I produce, and I rap, and I do a little singing here and there. So um, I got the chance to get with the book of Nimrod because Hurricane shoots my music videos. And she said her mom is a director and she's looking for actors. So I tried out and thank God I was picked to be a part of this. So that's how I got started. Um, you know, I have uh, done some plays myself, and um, you know, I just heard about the opportunity from Germ, and I just went out to the audition, and I just got blessed with this opportunity to be a part of this, you know, lovely cast. So that was just my coming to the story. I got started out. Uh, I used to host shows for the Trocadero every like once a month, and I happened to run into Dominique, and she pitched the idea. So it just was all uphill from there. Um, I started um, in, in school. I actually have a degree in performance from the University of Texas, Pan American. Um, graduated in 2009. I decided to hit up the East Coast because I know some of the best of the best, not only stage, stage performers, but some actors are on the East Coast, so I thought I'd give it a try. Um, how I got involved in the Book of Nimrod, I was actually, um, <clears throat> like all starving artists, we started out in the restaurant um, serving, and David Bravo was actually my guest. Uh, he started talking about this great project he was part of, and I tossed him a business card. Um, and <clears throat> at, no more than a few days later, I got pickpocketed, my wallet was gone with his card. So it wasn't until the next time he came back to the restaurant, thank God he loves the food, <laughs> to where I got in contact with him. I was like, we're, yeah, give me your number right now. We're exchanging information. Uh, on my birthday, I get a call from David saying he wants me to be part of the production, and I get on the phone with Carla, and next thing you know, she offers me the role of Nimrod. So that's how I got the part. So. I got started because like, um, my dad and knew Carla, and they were looking for the role of baby. So my dad asked me, and I said, sure. And <laughs> that's how I started. My dad is Roberto Lopez. Um, <laughs> AKA the guy who got beat up. <laughs> um, okay. I was trying to figure out how to, you want to clap for her? Yes. <laughs> I was just trying to figure out how to really answer that question because I can say I started at the age of six in church and plays and that's where it began initially and I've toured overseas at the age of 16. Um, but just speed up of how I even became a part of the Book of Nimrod was we was at the CEC building and uh, they were having a reading um, for the you know very first time and I just so happened to say hey Carla stuck my, my head in I had a um, rehearsal that day and she said Dion I have a wonderful role for you I saw um, no audition no, no nothing <laughs> but she known me for a long time supported me for a very long time so it was just one of those one of those things just so happened to pass each other at the perfect time. Um, so you, at the right place at the right time, and now I've been a, a part of it and still ongoing. Thanks. Any other questions? Well, I have one for Dion. In that just knowing that you've had an extensive uh, acting career, I was curious to, to learn where did you draw from the crazy mom chick? Like where? <laughs> How, like, that was deep, that was very intense. Where, where did you draw that from? I was actually waiting for this question. <laughs> um, I, I, I had a different feeling about it in the beginning, initially. Um, the reason why I'm saying that is because uh, just seven weeks on Thursday, I had given birth to a baby boy. Yay. Thank you. The reason why I'm saying the answer is, is a two-part question, um, answer to your question really is because in the initial stages of it, I was just going off the idea of a mother being at the point of being desperate, um, getting to the, resorting to the point of giving up their child in exchange for drugs. That made me really, really more so angry, but being as though the character wasn't angry, it was more of being desperate, 
um, I had to channel that emotion and place it, put it, you know, place it as something else or name it as something else. Out of fear, out of guilt, I had to name it something. And then she was so precious. I was like, how can I give you away? So I was battling with myself during those times, which encouraged the character to, to show even more. Now, at this point, just giving birth to a baby, I am like, wow, did I really, I'm about, I was about to cry over there, like, dang, this is crazy, I can't see myself. You know, you carry a child for nine months, and this is the answer that you have for your child. I want to give you up. No. <laughs> she was not choked. <laughs> but, yeah, that's pretty much what sums it all up. And, and that's pretty much where I got a lot of it. I, I've seen a lot of, you know, movies and things like that, of course. And you kind of have your own way of how you think, how you, as a drug addict, I mean, people like to... Call, you know, give a drug addict so many different ways of how to act, how to walk, how to talk, or certain things, stereotype a drug addict, but I just kind of wanted to make it a, a little bit different. I hope I did show some differences, variables there, so thank you. I had a question for um, Hurricane. I, you know, I know you had very, very little to work with. That's me over here, Hurricane. Yeah, <laughs> okay. like I know you had very little equipment to work with, and et cetera, and Carla kind of asked part one of my question. But did you have, as, as the photographer, as the person shooting this, did you have a kind of look that you were looking for, kind of like a philosophy that you were, you were going for? Um, not necessarily like a philosophy. Um, I just, I just know what I like to see, and she knows what she likes to see, and she likes what I like to see. So <laughs> it kind of goes hand in hand, and that's, I mean, I really, just like she said, like I'm self-taught, so I can't really give you, you know, a, a detailed idea of how I do it. Like it just, it's just how I do. It. <laughs> I guess it is magic. <laughs> This question is for Kima. She's taking a vow of silence, so she wants okay. me to answer this for her. Okay. I was wondering, how does one get started in acting as far as pushing the initial interest? You get that. Anyone who wants to answer. I have to, can you repeat that, please? I'm sorry. How does one get started in acting as far as pushing the initial interest? Mm, that's a good one. Um, like I, the, how I, well, Pretty much how I got started and how it even initiated. I said to myself, oh, wow, I'm acting. And I called it a career. I called it something. But I had to go through, um, I started off with school, creative and performing arts. And I just didn't know how serious it really was until I decided to pursue it in college. Um, and since then, it kind of, um, so the envelope been pushed a long time ago. And like I said, when I went overseas um, to travel, that's where I'm like, I'm taking this a little bit more seriously than I thought. So without me knowing that it was an envelope that was pushed or when I actually had my first initial um, agreement to say, this is what I'm doing and this is what I want to do for the rest of my life, um, it kind of like happened so quickly. And that's when I started taking ownership of it. So it turns from pushing, an, like, you know, delivering the envelope to actually receiving it back and actually taking ownership of it where I said, this is truly what I want to do. So I'm not sure if anyone had like the first step. My first step would probably would have been um, taking it a step further after high school, pursuing it in college, because obviously it got to be something serious at that, at that time. OK? There, there's also, um, in Philadelphia, there are a lot of little nooks and crannies where you can get your foot in. Usually a good way to get started, I would say, is to uh, participate in a reading. There are a lot of readings here in Philadelphia. And usually, you know, they're free of charge, for, for the most part, they're free of charge. You can go and, um, you know, go and listen and just, you know, introduce yourself to everybody there, the writer, the director, the actors that are there, and just let them know that you're available. Uh, there's also an organization called the Theater Alliance here in Philadelphia. Uh, you can become a part of the Theater Alliance listserv. It's uh, Theater Alliance, uh, Theater Alliance, groups at yahoo.com uh, but you can but theater line the theater alliance has a website you can go on there and find out how to get your 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 foot in the door but that's a good way to start participating in readings and if you're good and they like how you sound they'll start calling you next thing you know you're in a play 
and after a play, someone sees you and they may have an independent film, you look good for that part, next thing you know, you're in that. So in Philadelphia, I think that's a really good way to get started with readings and things like that. So and I I'm hope sorry. that's helpful. I'm sorry I bounced around the issue. I was talking about me, so I'm sorry. <laughs> There were some other questions, hands that have been up here. For, oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, yeah, I was just going to top off on, like, in order to pursue it, in order to pursue it, um, not really how much how I got uh, started. I mean, we all have our different stories on how we got started and how we uh, went about things and, you know, put our foot in the doors and decided, okay, not only am I, you know, a performer, a rapper, a singer, a poet, you know, I'm an actor now. We all have our different stories how we got there. But I would say if you wanted to so-called get that, you know, drive to do acting, uh, to perform, to be somebody completely different, you know, just do it. Um, to actually say that, oh, not only am I into plumbing, oh, I'm an actor, you know. And then it can develop to be where you can just be, oh, I'm just an actor. But you just have to have the mentality, if money wasn't an issue, what would you do for the rest of your life? And that's how I got started in performing. I always was mimicking things as a kid, uh, just running around, being goofy. Jim Carrey was an idol of mine in the 90s. <laughs> so I've always acted like him. And then they said, you're going to be, you're like a drama type of guy. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm going to be an athlete. I'm going to be a star athlete. I'll make millions of dollars. But then talent started going somewhere else. <laughs> So I thought, you know what, what would I do for the rest of my life if money wasn't an issue? I said, I'd like to give people a story and be somebody completely different, you know, if not every, every different year, every month, as much as possible. So if you want to pursue acting, I would recommend just be friendly and kind to people because word of mouth and networking is, I would say, a key thing in order to get started. I mean, that's how I got into this, and I'm really happy that I'm actually a really nice guy, and I love what I do. So that's how I got started. Um, yeah, it's on. Okay, yeah, it's on. Um, <laughs> so I already said how I got started, but I just think that like acting is like something that you could do wherever you are, no matter if it's like with your friends or with your family. It's just something that you can do um, and something that's fun. It's, you're stepping out of like the box. Because then you have you and then you have someone that you're playing. So it's like you can be the other person. You could be funny. You could be sad. You could be mad. You could be whatever you want beside yourself when you're acting. I'm not going to be able to. I got it. Um, Hi, everyone. Um, Dion Stone is my sister. And I just wanted to say I was there when she was acting, and I didn't know who she was because she's that good. And I wanted to say, Miss Carla, I always admired you, and I admired you more when you produced Hurricane, because Hurricane is the, when I saw her there um, filming this, everything seemed so simple, but when you see everything on the screen, that is professional, nothing amateur about it, and I'm sure you can agree with me. <laughs> this should be on film everywhere so everyone should spread the word ASAP. Like when we leave here, 10 million people should know about this tonight. So that's it, and, and, and wonderful job, everyone. Um, I just wanna congratulate you guys and Carla, great job. Um, so I was wondering, Carla, do you, have you shot all your episodes, and how can we help um, with your project? Well, the next phase is, um, I'm gonna tell you guys what happened. When we were shooting the last episode, the ninth episode, we got robbed. So our backup drives, our laptop, you know, everything that we had, I'm talking a year's worth of footage, 
photographs, everything gone, just poof, gone. So I was in my pajamas for two days. <laughs> but a distributor saw us, wanted to pick us up, um, so we'll be distributed video on demand on DISH, uh, and that'll be across the country. So that'll be a potentially 14 million viewers, potentially. Uh, but we got to talk it up and what have you. But we're not going to get rid of our online presence because there are people that don't have DISH and a lot of people are nixing cable. So we will maintain an online presence, but we'll also be on DISH across the country on video on demand. So that's where things are going next. And what I need from everybody is what she said. Tell everybody you know and there's a couple, of, a couple of other ways that I'm going to ask you that I'm going to do during the presentation in a few minutes. And, um, but that's the first line of defense. That's the first line. Just tell everybody you know. Go like us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. We have a YouTube channel. Just type in The Book of Nimrod, and it's there. First of all, I'm very sorry that you got robbed, but I'm glad that you pushed forward. Um, I just, <laughs> I had a question for the nine episodes that you shot, how long did it take you? Just, you know, I guess the actual shooting of each episode, if you can estimate the time for each, and then just the span of time from coming up with the script for the episodes and, and wow. wrapping production. It took about a year to do everything. I know each episode on YouTube is only like several minutes long, that's it. But by the time you try to round up all your actors, try to get your locations, and then a million things fall through, and then a million fires break out at once, and you're trying to put all the fires out, and it took about a year to do everything. But when we got on set, these guys work really fast. By the, when we get on set, it, it doesn't take us any more than maybe about three hours tops to get just about everything we need for, for that day. They work, we work really fast, so yeah. <laughs> um, this is not really a question. I just wanted to say I commend you all. Uh, Ms. Carla came to Eastern University. I'm a college student there, and she promoted uh, fathers, different aspects of fathers. Yeah, faces so she, of our fathers. Faces yeah. Of, yeah, faces of our fathers. And I kind of got the little, get the little clips in and clips there, but soon as she left, I found her on Facebook, I found the Book of Nimrod page, I subscribed to YouTube, I shared it to my cousins, yeah. I showed it to my mother, well, okay. she's here. Um, and I just left college yesterday just to hurry and make sure I came here on time. Awesome. So I just awesome. wanna say that it was a great, great presentation. I, find, I saw all the episodes and I will be a heavy supporter. So y'all were amazing. And especially the mother role, my mom's over here. Oh, my goodness. I can never do that to you. So thank you so much. You can really you can <laughs> I'm going to belly on that. We'll take one more question. I think some, yeah, this gentleman in the green cap. Oh, and who else? Oh, okay, well, two more, two more. Him and you, yes. I'm sorry. Oh, and you, okay. So I'm... I am an avid movie watcher and, you know, I go to screenings all over the city, actually all over the country. Okay. So for me, I'm just finding out about this. I, you know, I got an email blast from, um, you know, that had me know about it. But I'm just, I'm just now finding out, like, there's, the, there's like nine episodes. So I was kind of lost, like, trying to catch up on what, you know, what this was and what was the idea behind it because it was coming for a screening. I'm thinking I was going to see a full movie. Mm -hmm. But um, now that I've heard what you're developing and, and looking at doing, you know, there's a lot of resources that are available in the city of Philadelphia and really all over the country that I may be able to help support you with. So, you know, if we can talk afterwards, I would love to do What's that. What's your name? My name is John Thomas. Okay, and we're gonna I help talk. people get thank what you. they want in life, so yes, you know that's thank one you. thing. I'm, I'm curious though. Like, so you started this concept on the web. Is it a webisode? That, it started out as webisodes. Okay, so now what is the what is the like? I think the question got asked, but I didn't get a real answer. Like, is there like an ending to this storyline? Like, or is, is it this, limited? Yes, yes, okay. it is. Because when we come into, remember this is a, a spinoff of The Saints. When we come into the show, The Saints, baby's already like 18, 19 years old. 
So it definitely has a beginning, middle, and end for the book of Nimrod, and then it jumps into the saints. Okay, so where is the saints? Is that another? The saints is, I've actually been trying to get the saints up since 1999. Mm -hmm. But we're finally making some uh, headway. A gentleman named Kevin Arkadai is very much on board. You may not recognize the name because he's behind the scenes. Kevin Arkadai is a gentleman who created the series New York Undercover. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was also a showrunner and producer and writer for Soul Food, the cable series. And the list just goes on and on and on. He loved the Saints and he's on board. And with a, a, a heavyweight like that, um, that's supporting what we're trying to do, we'll be able to move it along. And we also have quite a bit of support from uh, Mr. Charles Dutton. He's very much on board and uh, for a lot of things that we're doing, not just uh, the Book of Nimrod or the Saints, but we have other projects that he's you know, very uh, much involved in. But yeah, it's gonna be a beginning, a middle, and an end for the Book of Nimrod. So it, it won't be forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Okay. No, it's, it's well, beginning. Well, I'm a big fan end. of the Wire. I, I'm I'm glad to see you know that there's a Philly version. Yeah. You know, look like it's coming. I'm glad off, you, you know, made that connection. That's what we're going yeah. for. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I just want to say that you guys did an awesome job, um, and I know that's been echoed uh, throughout this room. Uh, I did not know, like the gentleman up, up there said, it was nine episodes, so I'm glad to know that now, and I will be going to watch. I want to say that I know Dion, um, you're going to make me step my acting game up, girl. <laughs> I really enjoyed um, you pulling from wherever you pulled from for this role because it, was, it put me in the mind of um, Precious a little bit, how mm -hmm. it was just the, like, this woman is out of her mind. Oh, yeah. So I'm glad to see you in this role. And I just wanted to say to whoever the young lady was that asked about getting into acting, um, you can take classes at Mike Lemon and you can also take classes at the Actor Center. Yeah. Um, but I want to see this really, Carla, go on, um, on and on and on. And I wanted to be newsy because Noel says something about something going on in March. And oh. I, I wanted to know what was going oh, that on in March. March is our <laughs> target date to start. We have to reshoot everything since we're going to be going um, on television, so to speak. We have to reformat everything. We, it's, instead of a few minutes, it's going to go to a normal, long format. And we got to get it kind of looking sexy. One last question. Then we got to get to the next part. Cause <laughs> it was actually for um, uh, Lindo and, oh, Jerm. Um, the two of you are more music performers, so I was wondering how doing this project is kind of, has it changed your focus at all, or are you still more interested in music or more interested in acting or kind of like a conglomeration of the both of the two? Um, personally, I always just looked at it as a different canvas. Um, my biggest joy out of acting is, you know, I get to allow myself to die to live as a character. So I get to forget about all my stress, all my worries, all my concerns to then um, take in someone else's life. And I love that because it allows me to relieve myself and just be concerned about what's happening in the moment. And I love, you know, when I create my own work, I kind of have the idea of how I want it to sound, where I want to go with it, all the cues. But then when you, you know, when you have a director, you, you know, you kind of want to get their vision involved. So I like challenging myself to collaborate more and think about others as well as thinking about my character and how they feel. So I loved it. You know, I just looked at it as a different canvas and this is how I'm choosing to paint, you know? Mm 